In Chinese mythology, the Monkey King is a legendary trickster god who plays a central role in the adventure novel Journey to the West. Today, we shall try to uncover the symbolism behind the characters in the novel and the meaning of the story of Journey to the West. The author of Journey to the West was not purely writing a tale of adventure. He was writing a great metaphorical and symbolic drama of how to attain enlightenment according to the Buddhist scriptures which he dressed up in the garb of a mystical tale of adventure and then told as an adventure tale for the limited capacity of the uncritical, uneducated masses of those times. Journey to the West is a novel of mythical tale by Wu Cheng En, a Ming Dynasty scholar who wrote a tale about a monk's land travels from China to India. This tale was partly based on real historic events and the travels of the monk Xuan Zhang or San Zhang is known to be the man who brought Buddhist scriptures to the East. Buddhism originated in India and then spread to ancient China. Siddhartha Gautama or the Buddha was an Indian prince who gave up his status and became a renunciate and meditated for many years. One day while he was meditating under a tree, he reached an awakened state of mind called Nirvana which means enlightenment. The word Buddha meant the enlightened one or the awakened one. There were many Buddhas in India, but Gautama Buddha is the most famous of all Buddhas because he is the founder of Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy. The monk Shen Tsang or San Tsang from around the year 600 AD was a real historical figure. A Chinese Buddhist monk scholar, traveller and translator who travelled to India in the 7th century and described the interaction between Chinese Buddhism and Indian Buddhism during the early Tang Dynasty. He became famous for his 17-year overland journey to India, which is recorded in detail in the classic Chinese text, The Great Tang Records on the Western Regions which in turn provided the inspiration for the novel Journey to the West written by Wu Cheng En during the Ming Dynasty around 9 centuries after Sun Tsang's death. During the journey, he described many sacred Buddhist sites in what are now Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh and India. He was born in what is now Henan province around the year 602 AD and from boyhood, he took to reading religious books, including the Chinese classics and writings of ancient sages. A prolific writer and well-traveled Buddhist monk, San Zhang is remembered today for his account of his 17-year pilgrimage to India and his subsequent career as a translator of Buddhist scriptures. His translations and writings are extremely valuable to Chinese Buddhism. Born into a scholarly family, San Zhang at first received a strict Confucian education. At the age of 13, he followed in the footsteps of an older brother who was a Buddhist monk and entered a Buddhist monastery. By the age of 20, he had become a fully ordained monk. San Zhang then spent the next several years in Chang'an, now Xi'an, the capital of the Tang dynasty where he studied Sanskrit and other foreign languages. Confused by discrepancies he found in the Buddhist text, San Tsang decided to embark on a pilgrimage to India on foot. He planned to study in India, the birthplace of Buddhism, to reconcile the contradictions in the Buddhist text he had studied in China. Because of the ongoing conflict with the Turkic people, the Chinese emperor Tang Taizong had banned foreign travel on the grounds of security. This did not stop San Zhang. He nevertheless resolved to go after being inspired by a vision. Ignoring the emperor's travel ban, in the year 629 AD, he travelled across the Chinese border and headed for India, travelling past countries like Bangladesh, Nepal and Pakistan. He will only return to China after 17 years with valuable Buddhist sutras from India. He spent the later part of his life as a translator of this text. 
The novel Journey to the West, written by Wu Cheng En, was based loosely on the writings of Sun Zhang. The story comprised of four main characters on their journey to India from China to search for Buddhist sutras. The main character of the story is the historical monk San Zhang, and in the novel, San Zhang had three disciples who were sent by the deities in Taoist heaven to protect and guard him on his pilgrimage. The ancient Chinese believed in a paganistic world where various objects and elements have a deity or spirit guardian. You have the Jade Emperor, who is the king of heaven, the goddess Guan Yin, who is the goddess of mercy, and the Buddha, who is technically not a god but an enlightened human who gained immortality through his enlightenment, among various other deities. They believe the immortal or enlightened spirits who do not have to go through reincarnation of human life cycles anymore exist in a celestial place or state called heaven. In the semi-fictitious story of Journey to the West, the disciples of San Zhang are Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, whom according to the story was a mischievous immortal monkey that was trapped by the Buddha under a celestial mountain for 500 years. The other two disciples are Pixi, a pigman, and a sand demon. Now we go to each disciple and reveal what they represent. The monkey king named Sun Wukong, the legendary monkey born from a stone who acquired supernatural powers and became an immortal through years of Taoist practices. He learned Taoist martial arts, metaphysics and magic for many years and was blessed with unmatched superhuman strength and the ability to transform into 72 different animals and objects. The monkey king possesses immense strength he is able to support the pressing weight of two celestial mountains on his shoulders and running with the speed of a meteor. He is also extremely fast, able to travel 108,000 li, equivalent to 54,000 kilometers or 34,000 miles in one somersault. He also mastered the 72 earthly transformations, which allowed him to transform into various animals and objects. Sun Wukong was an immensely skilled fighter, capable of defeating the best warriors of heaven. His hair possessed magical properties, capable of summoning clones of the Monkey King himself, and he was able to turn them into various weapons, animals, and other objects by using his imagination, and can stop people in place with fixing magic. Wukong, the Monkey King, Believing himself to be the greatest fighter and in his quest for more power, he went to heaven and wreaked havoc there and defeated all the best fighters, deities and generals in heaven. He even wanted to take the position of the Jade Emperor, the King of Heavens. His ego trip was finally defeated by the Buddha and according to the story, the Buddha in heaven challenged the Monkey King to escape the Buddha's open palm. The Monkey King accepted the challenge, seeing that the Buddha's hand appeared to be no larger than a lotus, and he leapt and flew to the end of the earth and found five pillars that supported the heavens. The Monkey King tied a sign on one of the pillars that said, The great sage as high as heaven was here and he urinated on the pillar. He then returned to the Buddha and claimed victory, and he told the Buddha to tell the Jade Emperor to give him all the Emperor's powers so that he could be in charge of heaven. The Buddha then laughed and told the Monkey King to look again at the Buddha's open palm. And to Wukong's surprise, he saw that the five pillars that supported the heavens were actually the Buddha's five fingers and the little sign that he left there was actually tied to one of the Buddha's fingers. Whereupon the Buddha turned his hand into a mountain and imprisoned the Monkey King and sealed the mountain with a magical charm bearing the Buddhist Sanskrit mantra Om Mani Padme Hum. According to the tale, 500 years later, Guan Yin, the Goddess of Mercy, freed the Monkey King and gave him a chance for repentance from his old ways. He was given the duty to accompany and protect the 
monk San Tsang on his journey to the West to find Buddhist scriptures. Along the long journey, the monk and his three disciples were always met with earthly spirits and demons who transformed and disguised themselves as pitiful peasants who needed the monk and his disciples' help to get rid of other so-called demons. While the true intention of these evil demons and spirits was to trick and capture San Tsang and to eat his flesh, as they believed eating the flesh of a monk would enable them to free themselves from being earthbound and to gain immortality. The monkey king, Wukong, was always the one who was clever enough to see through the demon's tricks and disguises. His martial art skills and magic came in handy, and he defeated all the demons in the stories. And at the end of each story in the novel, the monkey king and his fellow disciples learn something from their master. Often spiritual lessons about compassion, empathy, sympathy, mercy, and detachment from physical attachments. Now the symbology. Wukong, the monkey god or monkey king, is the representation of the human mind. Not the universal mind, but the individual human mind. Just like the mind, he possesses great capabilities, logic, ingenuity, intelligence, shrewdness, and even psychic powers. Wukong was not easily fooled by the tricks of demons who wanted to eat the flesh of his master. Leaping tens of thousands of kilometers in an instant, isn't that what the human mind can do with thought and imagination? He can travel great distance in one leap, just like the mind can with the power of imagination. He also has a powerful imagination to manifest objects and perform magic. Like the human mind's creativity, he can turn a strand of his hair from his body and imagine it into any object. Wukong, as a symbol of the mind, although intelligent, is restless, rebellious, active, immensely powerful, but often identified with the ego, and has to learn empathy, compassion, and oneness from his master. His master often had to stop him from harming or killing the demons, and to persuade Wukong to have mercy on them. In the Buddhist temple of Niko Toshogu in Japan, there is a sign of the three monkeys. The monkeys tell us to see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. You may ask, why do they use monkeys to convey the message? If you have read books about Buddhist meditation, you would have come across the metaphor. When the beginner meditator tries to meditate, he would discover that his mind, jumping from one subject to another with endless chatter and activity. Thus, in Buddhist principles, the nature of the mind is like a monkey, always restless and unsettled. And the practitioner's task in meditation is to control the monkey mind. Only when the monkey mind is calm and under your control, can you properly enter a state of silence for meditation. To enlighten yourself. In ancient Hindu and Buddhist philosophies, the human mind is acknowledged as powerful, intelligent, and even possessing supernatural psychic powers such as telepathy and telekinesis. The Buddha viewed the human individual as a composite of various psychological and physical elements that are separate from the self or spirit. Your mind is not your I or I am. In one of his earlier discourses, the Buddha declares that we ought to regard any form of sensation and consciousness, whether past, future or present, internal or external, manifest or subtle, as it actually is. This is not mine. This is not myself. This is not what I am. So why was it that in the novel Journey to the West, the Monkey King defeated all the generals in heaven? The Monkey King was able to wreak havoc in heaven because the human mind, if undisciplined, will be influenced by the ego and if not careful, has the capacity to destroy the peace, unity and oneness of your spirit and in your inner states, 
even the highest of all states called heaven, resulting in chaos. And the Buddha, the one who had conquered the mind and its ego, was the only being who was able to tame the mind. We are told in the story, the Buddha imprisoned the monkey king under a mountain formed by his hand for 500 years, sealed with a charm bearing the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. If you look up the meaning of the mantra, the mantra carries this meaning. With the practice of a spiritual path of method and wisdom, you can transform your impure body, action, speech and mind into the pure exalted body, action, speech and mind of a Buddha, the Enlightened One. In Buddhism, the Enlightened State is called Nirvana. It is the highest transcendent state of being in which there are neither suffering, desire nor sense of self and the subject is released from the effects of karma and the cycles of death and rebirth. It represents the final goal of Buddhism. The Chinese concept of heaven is a symbolism of the highest inner state called Nirvana. But even the most enlightened being, if not careful, could let his mind and ego take over and can risk falling into lower states of being such as order can turn into disorder, peace into chaos, and joy into depression. Even heaven can be turned into hell if one is not careful in taming the mind and ego. The whole drama is internal. It is an internal play of mind, ego, and the spirit. With Buddhist wisdoms of non-attachment, compassion, right thought, right action, right intent, sprinkled across the many adventures in the novel. Now to the second disciple. Pixie, named Tupa Tie, was actually a deity, a military marshal serving in one of the celestial planes. He was cast out of the celestial realms to become a pigman. Pixie is a coarse figure whose gluttony and lustiness was totally at odds with any religious figure. Pixie is the symbol of man's earthly desires and weaknesses related to the human body. Lust, desire for luxury, gluttony, laziness, procrastination. Pixie is the ultimate symbol of all these human traits or sins. He is the representation of man's physical body, especially the body's needs and desires. His lesson is one of the subjugation of physical needs and desires to practice moderation and mastery of all bodily aspects. The Buddhist monk or anyone who is in search of enlightenment must learn to control his bodily urges, to abstain or to moderate his desires, and to prevent his tendency for laziness. Pixie's story is also a warning that even an immortal or deity could be tempted by lust and desires and fall from grace, reincarnated to the coarser physical world to relearn his lessons. Now the third disciple, the sand demon named Sha Wu Ching or Sandy. Originally, Sha Wu Ching was a general in heaven. After being furious mad with anger, in the midst of a tantrum, he broke a valuable vase of the Jade Emperor. Punished by the Jade Emperor and exiled to earth, he was reborn as a sand demon. Here is an immortal, a general in heaven who was often polite, but due to an uncontrolled temper outburst, destroyed everything he stood for and was banished. He has to take thousands of years to redeem and to control his emotions as a demon. That is why, as the saying goes, it takes a lifetime to build a good reputation, but only five seconds to destroy that good reputation for life. His Buddhist name, Sha Wu Ching, given by the deity Kuan Yin, means sand aware of purity. That is, the coarseness of our emotions can be tamed and controlled to become pure. So Sandy's lesson is one of repentance and control. Our emotions, 
are like Sandy the demon, prone to outbursts, and the meditator seeking enlightenment must control his or her emotions. In fact, during meditation, when certain memories or subjects from the past resurface, we may experience the strong emotions of anger, envy, jealousy, hurt, disappointment, etc. resurfacing from past memories in our subconscious mind. And in Buddhist meditation, the meditator is told to release these emotions and the goal is to detach the association of the memory to these strong emotions for you to get over the emotions. So if you see through the personifications and stories, you will discover that the spirit or our self, our I am, is symbolized as the compassionate spiritual monk, San Zhang. The mind of man is symbolized as the monkey king. Our bodily desires and urges are symbolized as pixie and our emotions which are like demons inside of us are symbolized as a sand demon sandy the journey to the west to obtain buddhist scriptures is really the representation of man's inner search and inner journey for enlightenment the monk or our self our spirit our i am has to tame and control his three disciples the monkey mind his physical body's desires and urges and the demons of emotions. Very often, the three disciples learn lessons from their master, the spirit, about compassion, mercy and oneness. The monkey mind learns the lessons of compassion, empathy, mercy and to release the ego. The pig learns to let go of his lust and laziness to focus on attaining enlightenment. The demon learns to tame his negative emotions and to serve the spirit. After each story, they learn to release, forgive and let go and they move on ever closer to their goal, which is India, which symbolized the enlightened state or their enlightenment. From this, you can see these characters are personifications of different aspects of man. Through their adventures, the storyteller was trying to tell the reader about how to seek enlightenment, that is to use, control and tame your mind, body and emotions in order to awaken the spirit. The spirit or soul of man comprises of the highest qualities of man, which are love, compassion and oneness. All these are antitheses of the human ego. If you study yoga sutras or Buddhist philosophies, the ego is something that must be released by the spirit in order to attain enlightenment. If enlightenment is oneness and unity, the ego is clearly an obstruction since the ego exists based on the idea and concept of separation of each individual. The Buddha, when almost achieving enlightenment, was approached by the devil in his meditation with promises of owning the whole world. The same goes with Jesus. After being baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days and nights in the Judean desert. During this time, Satan came to Jesus and tried to tempt him. Jesus refused each temptation and finally Satan then departed. The nearer you are to being liberated and enlightened, the ego comes to you in a final effort to offer you something big to tempt you, to prevent you from liberating yourself from Maya, the illusion of the world. Maya is the illusion of the non-permanent physical world, which is forever transient and temporary. In Buddhism and Hinduism, we are told the physical world is limited and non-permanent. Only the spirit is permanent. When the Buddha attained Nirvana and was awakened in consciousness in enlightenment, he saw that human life cycle is non-permanent and transient and humans live through various reincarnations are governed by the law of karma, which means the law of cause and effect, action and reaction. 
which is the Eastern equivalent of the Christian concept of sow and you shall reap. And in Buddhist philosophy, the Eightfold Path in Buddhism consists of eight practices. Right belief, right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right thought, and right meditation. All of which guides man to use the law of karma rightly to benefit himself and others and to discover one's true nature of the spirit in order to attain enlightenment to be free from the human life cycle of reincarnation. The stories in Journey to the West are metaphors of the internal drama of the mind, body, emotion and spirit inside our own being, in our own journey to enlightenment. So this concludes the basic and symbology of Journey to the West. Please like, share and subscribe to Mine is Life YouTube channel and to turn on the notification button for more videos about the mind, self-improvement, power of the mind, law of attraction, spirituality and many more.